Rep has got to be one of the most important Next utilities that can help you filter huge amounts of data fast and reliably. Without it, such a task can be incredibly slow or even downright impossible in certain cases. If you've ever been in a position to have to look for specific data or data patterns inside of a large file or a large set of them, you know how tedious that can get. In case you haven't, buckle up because you're about to find out. Welcome to Next Tricks. I am Nick and this is Grep. How's it going guys? This week we're going to talk about grep, the revolutionary tool that makes it really easy to search and filter through contents of files. It is indispensable when working with big plain text files, but it's so handy that people use it all the time in all types of other creative ways. Right off the top, the most common use cases that I can think of where grep really shines are searching log files, extracting specific information from configuration files, running global searches through computer code and cleaning up or refining command outputs. Grep can be used in two ways, as a standalone command or as part of a pipeline with other commands. Both have their advantages, but before we explore all of that, I'd like to say a quick word about our sponsor, the 70s, without which none of this would have been possible today. Before Grep, there was Ed. A basic text editor written by Ken Thompson, one of the founding fathers of Unix back at AT&T Bell Labs. If you want to know a little more about him, I put a link in the description to a short video I found that I highly recommend watching. The guy is an actual legend. The GREP command in ED was used to search datasets for regular expressions, but it couldn't handle large amounts of text. Thompson then extracted that code into a standalone tool that he named GREP for Global Regular Expression Print. Reinforcing the first rule of Unix philosophy, do one thing and do it well. Using a text editor to search for something implies actually opening the file to get all that visual feedback. Maybe there's some text processing going on, some formatting, soft wrapping, syntax highlighting, all the things that have to happen in real time. A very real and common problem with working with large files is that systems tend to run out of memory fast. And when that happens, everything slows down. The bigger the data, the slower the experience, and this can eventually lead to a full halt or even a system crash that may result in data loss. Fortunately, all of this can be entirely skipped by using a dedicated solution for searching and filtering, and this is where grip comes in. Let's look at the standalone command first to get a grip on the syntax and available options. It's basically grep, then the options, if we're going to use any. The pattern that we're looking for is going to be a regular expression and where to look for it. That's a file path or directory in case of recursive searches. There are many interesting available options that you can find in a manual, but why spoil the joy of discovering all of them? Let's focus on the most commonly used ones. I have prepared a few files here, the complete works of Shakespeare from the project Gutenberg, some curated demographic stats from GitHub, and a super top secret JSON file from work that I'm just going to use as a demo while filtering out any sensitive data. So in no particular order, we have the I flag for case insensitive search. Pretty much everything in Linux is case sensitive, so this option helps when you want to ignore that subtle distinction between such occurrences. There's dash W, as in word, to match whole words. A word is generally defined as a sequence of letters and digits that doesn't include any white space or other special characters. The C option, as in count, can be used to count the number of occurrences that match the provided pattern. Dash N for number will display the line number of occurrences inside of files. We can use dash O to output only the results and not all the clutter around them. This is very useful for extracting data. Another important one is dash V for invert match. You can use this to basically flip your pattern and have grep return everything that doesn't match it. Then of course we have dash R for recursive mode. This is very powerful. We can give it a directory as a target. If you don't, it'll use the current work in directory and it'll search through all the files in there and all the subsequent structures that you may have. An important thing to note here is that recursive stuff can always have unexpected outcomes, so try to be mindful of the size of the directory and the number of files inside, as this operation can take a toll on your system. One thing that can help narrow it down even more are the dash dash include and dash dash exclude options that you can use to limit the search to files whose names match a specific pattern, or for example files that have a certain extension. 
It's also useful to see some context sometimes when you're looking at the output of grep. So you can use dash capital C for context followed by a number to display that number of lines before and after every match. Similarly, we have capital A for after to display number of lines after every match. And capital B for lines before the matches. Also, you should understand what happens when you run grep without any options. By default, grep will use what is known as the BRE syntax, which is short for basic regular expression, which means that the pattern that you provide is going to be interpreted as a basic regular expression. This is the most widely used and supported flavor of regular expression syntax. More advanced popular syntaxes that you can use are ERE with the capital E flag for extended regular expressions and capital P for PCRE, which is the syntax for Perl regular expressions. On macOS, you may have the BSD version of grep, which doesn't support the capital P flag, so as always, you would have to install the GNU one using something like Homebrew. Sometimes all you need to find is a simple string. In that case, BRE's got you covered. Other times, however, you may want to look for some kind of string, but with a variable component to it and maybe some conditional logic behind it all. More advanced regular expression can help there, but you may want to draw the line somewhere before writing any complicated expressions that are barely readable and hard to maintain. Regular expressions, or regex for short, as a concept is not really specific to Linux or Unix-based systems. It's a language agnostic feature that exists across various programming languages, operating systems, and text processing tools. It's an extensive topic, but I think it's important to at least become familiar with it since it's a core skill that you can use across all the many tools that support it. Depending on how refined or complex your patterns are, the results from grep may vary in relevance. If you feel like a pattern doesn't perform too well or that your matches are all over the place and that's not quite the result that you were expecting, don't lose hope just yet. Instead, you can use those same results as the input for another grep command to close in on your goal. In any next environment, piping is the mechanism that basically allows you to daisy-chain byte-sized operations, effectively splitting complex execution logic into more manageable chunks. Now look, as far as regex goes, I'm not gonna claim you're going from zero to hero or become some regex ninja overnight, but every ninja had to start somewhere and I'm hoping that my next video is going to serve you as a solid launchpad for your own journey. So stay tuned if you don't want to miss it by hitting the bell and subscribing if you haven't already. As of somewhere last week, there's actually a little over a hundred of us here going strong, so let's keep this going, this is amazing. Thank you all so much for watching and for the nice comments. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.